Hey guys, I hope you are all doing fine. I'm Chloe, welcome back to Cozy Pixels. And today I prepared a very special video for you today. I mean, it's very special to me because today we are going to look through the Sims 2 preview disc. Which is this bad boy? The green screen is messing with it a little bit, but exclusive preview disc. Start creating your Sims today and here you can see we have a few things on the disc. I think I'm gonna mirror the image, but here we have about Sims, body shop, um, screen savers, wallpapers, Sims cinema, Sims photo album, and exclusive Sims 1 content, which I won't show today, obviously. Uh, setting this up was a bit harder than I thought because all this requires Flash Player, which we all know got discontinued in December, so I'm a bit late with this video. I could have saved myself a lot of hassle if I make this earlier, but I only realized recently that this is something I want to do. Because actually I didn't have this version when I was a kid in the early 2000s with uh, The Sims Making Magic. They used to give away a CD called The Sims Preview and uh, it had a lot of exciting content about The Sims 2 and I remember as a kid I used to watch it all the time because I didn't have the PC to run The Sims 2 so in the meantime while well, I was waiting to get a PC so I can play I watched these videos all the time so I thought it would be cool to share with you guys and go down memory lane so here we are. Unfortunately I can't really uh, give you the whole experience because of the Flash Player Piesco thing. I'm trying to do my best so here we are. Oh yes this is... Okay, this is peak 2000s. So here we are. I hope this works. I wonder if it works. You see, it's not working, but I have all these. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so I would say first, let's check the About Sims 2. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is amazing. About the Sims 2. In the Sims 2, the possibilities are endless. We had a student house complete with strewn pizza boxes and walls covered with posters. Create a chic... Abode? Abode. I've never heard that. Create a chic abode for a hip young couple with matching furniture and wallpaper. Make an idyllic family home complete with all the mod cons and carefully planned garden. Or just jump into a pre-built home, beep up a couple of random sims and take it from there. It's actually funny because this is for the base game and in the base game we didn't have student houses because teens couldn't live alone unless their parents died. So it's interesting. Create your sims exactly how you want. God, skater, fashion victim, scientist, you name it. Their face, body and outfit can be exactly tailored to your liking. Thanks to countless easy adjustment sliders, color choices and clothing styles. And ones that's done with them. Watch them grow up, experience life's ups and downs and help them achieve their dreams. Features, house and garden. Okay, so this is like a build mode. I don't want to read all this, but you can just pause the video and read it if you want. Uh, but I don't want to bore you with this by me reading it aloud. Actually, it's funny that they use this house on the box art because this is the most horrendous house in Pleasant View, in my opinion. This with the big lake. The floor plan of this is the worst. Dreams. Less of the I need and more of the I want. Yes, this is my favorite feature in The Sims 2, the wants and fear system. Your Sims now have dreams and aspirations of their own and it's up to you to have to achieve them. Maybe they want to be famous, maybe they want to start a family, or maybe they dream of being astoundingly wealthy. They can't be famous in base game Sims genetics. Yeah, this was a whole new thing in The Sims 2 because in The Sims 1 your Sims couldn't die of old age and kids never grew up so it was a huge thing when Sims 2 released that now your Sims can have full lives and your kids can grow up and have their families on their own so it was the whole main selling point of the franchise it was really great big life moments yes the memories those were really great in The Sims 2 big life moments will have a lot more texture and detail compared to the original Sims for example, when your sims get married or abducted by aliens, there will be in-game cinematics and special effects that bring that event vividly to life and effectively emphasize the drama. I love those! Why don't we have those in later sims games? Those are so great. So this is the about the sims. I think it's basically what we have on the box of the original sims. <laughs> Install the body shop application. Uh, 
this made me remember in uh, 2014 when uh, EA was giving away sims for create a sim demos everyone was like I want it how do I get it and I don't know but there were like uh, some shenanigans going on on how can one get the create a sim demo and everyone was doing that thing but it obviously made no sense because it uh, didn't affect who got the demo or who didn't yeah I don't want to go through this because we all know what the body shop is yeah so these were the objects you could get for the sims one if you uh, had this version Woolworths is that like a British shop or something because I ordered this from the UK. Yes, we have a bunch of wallpapers. I remember loving these and I used these when I was a kid. It was so great and look at these resolutions. Amazing. I love these so 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 much. I remember watching these all the time. And we have screensavers. Click the button and copy the desired screensaver to your PC. Oh yeah, obviously I clicked it but nothing happens because uh, it's not working as it's intended to work. Why Adobe? Why discontinue Flash? And we have the photo album here. Look at this. <laughs> Amazing. And we had these lovely pictures showing the game. <laughs> yeah, I remember like when this was so new, my mind was absolutely blown because in the Sims, because I was used to the Sims one and in the Sims one, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that game, but you couldn't separate couldn't choose separately your hair and your face. So the face came with the hair and the hair came with the face. So it was really like mind blowing to me that, oh my God, not only you can select your hair differently in this game, but you can modify the face features of the Sims and choose their uh, clothing separately for every occasion because in the Sims one you basically only had uh, everyday clothing and when you got married you had the wedding clothing and you had one basic pajamas and that's it so it was it was really amazing to me oh yeah this is the house from Pleasant View I don't think I had uh, this exact version back then because I don't remember the photo book but one thing that really sits in my memory is that uh, the disc I had when I was a kid had the Strange Town trailer on it and I was obsessed with that one. I watched that the most times because it was just so interesting to me and like they added a little flavor of story in there. So it was really great. I remember watching that a lot. I'm gonna look that up if it's not in here. This is great. I wish this would work, but here we should have a video. So maybe I will just edit it like that in the video for you guys so you can see the cinema. Okay, so this one is called Neighborhood Fly Through. Yeah, the resolution obviously is not HD. The biggest secret to the biggest PC game of all time. I remember watching this. Yes, I remember this one. Uh, it's so nostalgic for me. Because I told you guys already, but playing The Sims 2 is not nostalgic for me because I never stopped playing it. But these things that I see about it, like uh, the other day I watched all The Sims 2 trailers on YouTube and that was super nostalgic, like uh, I can't even tell how happy this makes me really because it's just so fun. <laughs> Can we go back there for a second? This guy has three women waiting for him when he gets home from work. Now that's what I call life. Knowledge, yes. <laughs> oh, I love this. For a second, I thought it was weird showing the woohoo scene for the family aspiration, but yeah, I get it. Yeah, ghosts and aspiration failures. That's so amazing. I really miss those from the later Sims games. Unleash your creativity. Yes. I feel like this was like super mind blowing in 2004. I don't know if it's just me, but like if you think about it, in 2000, 
I mean, obviously, they started working on this before 2003. But if you put The Sims 1 and The Sims 2 next to each other, then the difference is like mind blowing. If you put The Sims 2 and The Sims 3 next to each other, I don't feel the same way. Like, yes, we had open world and stuff like that, but it was just not that big of a deal for me. I don't know. But I know a lot of people love that. But just look at these. And also I like that it's not uh, promising something that it isn't. Yeah, I think it's... Yes, this is in the opening sequence, right? <laughs> I love how they were like just... What to do now? What to do? <laughs> it would have been nicer if we could hear their voices, I think. Wait, this, this wasn't even the first kiss sequence. Oh wait, this is something else then. I hope it's PG. Oh, was that it? Oh, but this was a bit disappointing. <laughs> I thought at least it would be the first kiss sequence, but apparently not. Key. And the last video in here is the official trailer. It doesn't seem right because in the cinema we had one which was called Making of the Sims and I remember watching that. Yeah, and obviously this is the classic original trailer for The Sims 2. I really love this. The whole thing is super funny, but also it kind of encapsulates the game perfectly. Because, you know, it shows uh, later in the trailer that they will have kids and stuff. But also, for me, it shows that back there, The Sims was still fun and quirky and, uh, you know, like in The Sims 1, we had the stripper cake. Which was not really child friendly, but it was also very funny. And here in this trailer, we see the woman rip off her shirt all the time. And like, I don't know why, but I kind of miss those stuff because nowadays, especially with The Sims 4, everything is heavily targeted for kids. I feel like. And I think a lot of us feel like that. And I just miss. Stuff like this, it's, it was funny, and you could do weird stuff here. <laughs> Obviously, you can't do it in The Sims 2. I mean, you can't make your... I mean, you can run around naked when you go to college, but... <laughs> but yeah. And actually, uh, this is from The Sims 1, this couch, but this is not what I wanted to say. Uh, the thing I wanted to say is that I checked, I think I checked this uh, on YouTube and someone wrote in the comments that this trailer isn't really accurate, like you can't do basically any of these in The Sims. I mean, like literally, you can't make your Sim attack your other Sim on the couch while ripping her top off, obviously. And uh, they said that the game doesn't uh, look like this at all. And that's true. But I think the Sims 2 looks greater than these. Obviously, you can't really say anymore because it's just a bunch of pixels because the video is so old. But also what I want to say is that if I see a trailer like this and I get a game like The Sims 2, it doesn't really bother me if it's not a picture-perfect match, if that makes sense. Because I got a nice game out of Sims 2 without this thing that you can see in this trailer. And I think it does a perfect job in getting you interested. And the whole point for me in this trailer always was that they get a life together, they grow all together and they die and their kids can come in their places and basically that was the whole point of marketing for The Sims 2 because that was the whole new feature and I think it does a great job, I, I really love this trailer like you, you can obviously don't not do that but 
it doesn't mean that it's a bad game, if that makes sense. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think it's it's not an accurate representation? Okay, this is not because we didn't have university in the base game. That I can give you. But like, I never missed not being able to set a bucket of fire. But yeah, this is so sweet. I super love this trailer. And I actually plan to make a video on comparing Sims 2 trailers to Sims 4 trailers, if you guys are interested. Um, because I think it's interesting to like put them next to each other and see how accurately they represent the game. And if they are not, then is it really a problem or not? Okay, so this is the Strange Town trailer that I mentioned. I don't know why is it not on this one. Uh, I was trying to look for the other version of this disc that I had, but I thought this would be more interesting. Things aren't quite what they seem. This is up on YouTube. Uh, it's from IGN.com's YouTube channel. There are the grunts and the smiths. <laughs> I didn't understand any English back then, obviously, when I uh, used to watch this, but I think the story was kind of, you know, Simple and straightforward enough. <laughs> I love this video. I don't know why. I mean, I. I think I kind of understand why I did watch this more than the original trailer because this was actually from the game and the trailer was rendered something. Look at this epic, epic helicopter with this epic music. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's kidding, it was so funny for me. But then when I actually got the game, I rarely ever played Pleasant Views. Pleasant Views, Strange Town. So yeah, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> this guy is racist towards aliens. Okay, now this is something that I kind of missed from the game that you can't really see other... I mean, you can. But I think that came later in the game, like when you can see other people jog through your lot. And not in groups, obviously, but yeah. I think it wasn't in base game. Okay, yeah, and he's inviting him over. <laughs> Made with Sims 2 Movie Maker, amazing. And like... Here it makes it seem like the smiths are the bad guys, but in, in reality, PT is not really mean or anything. And we have this video, which uh, I think was on, which I think should have been here, which is uh, called Inside the Sims 2. And I kind of remember watching something like this. No, it's a different one, I think. Because I remember that on my discs there used to be interviews with Will Wright and I remember watching those obviously not that much because I didn't know English that well but may I think maybe there were Hungarian subtitles on it. As a whole, and the is Team really Latorno. The <laughs> the, the There's the to tell Audi. The story. University. And to create the environment that that story exists within. He's named after I think him, I think. Sims 2 is just going to be spectacular. I think it's it's the 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 ground floor of a whole new adventure. It is so much Agree. more engaging and immersive because we've been able to increase the um, vice the president scene, the executive setting, the environment producer. as well as the Sims themselves. So it feels much more like you're in the room with these people. The man um, as himself. Opposed to watching them from a high balcony like you did with the Sims 1. I don't know if you guys remember, but way back then when you installed the Sims 2 first, um, and maybe 
for no i think it was just for the base game but if you had the base game on a disc and you installed it there used to be this memory game that you could play while waiting for it to install i don't know if you remember that but i used to love that game so so much it was always so fun and after a while they discontinued to include that you actually get to follow your sims through their lifetime Toddlers, they become kids, kids become teenagers, teenagers become adults. The grandparents and the parents and the grandchildren and that you have this interconnected family tree and you can see those relationships play themselves out on the screen. Yes. Pregnant. And I think that's very important that you can see they play themselves out. You don't have to intervene all the time for your sims to do stuff. And I absolutely love that. And, uh, we love this franchise. We want this franchise to go on and on and on. And we want everybody to keep loving it and keep having a great time and living their fantasies. And you will have That's what we wanted too, but that's not what happened, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, let me just rewind. It's a wide open universe. We're, we're trying to make it really, really so much better and not lose the spirit of where it came from. Uh, we love this franchise. We, want we love this franchise. This franchise. To go on and on and on. We want this franchise want to go on and on, and, and we want everybody fantasies. to love it. I know a lot of uh, women have written me and said that they put their boyfriends in the game along with them, and they see what happens, and then they tell their boyfriend, you know, what happened in the game. And I don't think they, they expect that the game is simulating what will happen, but they're more curious to see what their boyfriend's reaction is going to be when they tell them what happened, you know, when he was flirting with his next-door neighbor. Okay, this is so funny. Like, guys, don't ever tell me that you never made your crush in The Sims and made them fall in love with you in game because that's a lie. I remember doing that a lot. And then, like, as uh, Via said, even when I already had a boyfriend, I used to do that and uh, play our lives. But I don't really do that anymore. I don't know. It's not really fun making yourself like a um, hundred times and your boyfriend a hundred times over and just watch as you guys have five kids in the Sims over and over and over. I don't know. It's not that fun to me anymore. But I remember doing that. And I know uh, people did that a lot as well. And um, I would lie if I would say that I never made my celebrity crushes in the Sims and made them fall in love with me. Sorry, Ina. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> but it's really funny that he kind of mentioned that fences and real roofs and diagonal. I just want to say that I really love how this guy is so super enthusiastic about this game and like the release. Bill Bright is obviously enthusiastic about it, but the way he talks is much calmer if that makes sense but this guy he shows and emphasizes and talks and you can oh, see how excited he is to work on this game mundane, but it's a huge new thing it makes it a much more compelling experience because you just feel so connected to what's on the screen and it feels so real that's true Hokey. to me the most exciting part of the sims yeah it kind of feels real into the sims themselves. like even obviously it's a game and there are things in the game which aren't really realistic, like the money tree or vampires or something like that. But the basis of the game, the Sims feel real. And I think that's a, a huge thing because they have wants, they have fears, they have memories, they have personalities, they have things they like to talk about, they have things they hate to talk about. They have lifelong uh, aspirations. And I think that's really like immersive. It really connects you to the game you are playing while in the sims 4 you they don't have i mean they have whims but they are they turned off by default because they suck so bad they don't have fears they have no depth but the sims 2 is just full of love it's full of personality and i don't know i like i don't want to shit on the sims 4 in this video <laughs> I just uh i'm just trying to say why i love the sims 2 so much and I can see that these people love The Sims 2 so much as well because they are proud of their work. The fact that they now have it's facial true. expressions, the fact that you can accessorize them, you can put makeup on them, all of that <laughs> just goes to your ability to create characters that you believe in and can connect with. Three, you know, I started a long, long time ago and worked on it kind of in the background for many years. Um, but two years previous, in 1991, our home burned down in the Oakland Hills fire. Oh. And we lost everything, you know. I got out with a few pictures and that was it. Um, so from square one, we had to kind of build our lives back up. We had to go, you know, kind of buy a house, then buy furniture, buy clothes, buy all the, you know, buy a new car. 
all the stuff that had burned up in the fire. And it was interesting just kind of looking at the order in which, you know, we acquired things. You know, step one, new underwear, toothbrush, you know. <laughs> step two, you know, maybe some new <laughs> pants and shirts, you know. And then, you know, step three, you know, we're in a hotel room. And, and kind of building your life back up, you know, and getting a sense of the materialistic basis, you know, and which things are really important on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. At the same time, you know, we got out of the fire safely, and my daughter was... It's very interesting. And we realized how meaningless these material things were relative to our safety. And so that was just, you know, very interesting, that whole process that happened, you know, a couple of years before I started thinking about doing the sums. <gasps> that's actually very interesting. Um, because I thought he's going to be like, oh, yeah, and that's how I... Um built up the sims basically so build mode first buy mode and, but then he went totally different way and was like okay yeah first we bought new toothbrushes which actually makes a lot of sense but i just didn't expect that in relations of the sims but actually that's a really nice fun fact there's a video on youtube i watched recently i will uh, look it up and link it in the description or into the cards because i think uh it's really interesting to watch because it talks about real rights experience a little bit before Sims and um, yeah, the guy worked a lot to get at the point where he could release Sims, which Kiwi became the biggest PC um, game of all time at that point. So it's very interesting. You're going to know when someone's a slob. You're going to know when somebody is really nice. You're going to know when somebody is really active. You're going to see that on the screen and the way that the Sims behave. That's actually true. And <laughs> oh, here we go again back at the Sims 4. But it really makes me happy that looking at after all these years, like I've been playing The Sims 2 for 16 years, 17 years now. And I know I say that a lot, but it's still true. You know what they say in these dev blogs? It's still true. It's uh it's really what they gave to us. It's not uh, fake. It's not uh, just marketing. It's not um, good sounding catchphrases. It's, it's the truth. It's the mechanics they put into the game. And it's what we can see while playing it. And not just for a week, but for years and years, we can see that, yes, you can really see the personality of your sims you can really control their lives you can really do this and that and it um what came to my mind is that actually i checked my sims 4 collector's edition box a few weeks ago and it had the little booklet in it uh and it said smarter sims play with life or something like that and well, yeah, that age like milk. Got body types, you know, you can feed them up and get them fat. You can put them on the workout bench. Yeah, because in the Sims for in the Sims one, you couldn't the uh, it happens, you know, get different body workout, types workout, because body types came with different moment. clothing as well. Get up and, <laughs> and, bing, and he'll be buff, which is sort of how we all wish it works. I love this guy. He's my favorite. <laughs> Obviously, next to me, right? Two Sims, and they have a child. You're going to see characteristics pass along through the children. Yeah, genetics. I mean, we know the genetic system in The Sims 2 is not perfect because of the firstborn syndrome, but it's actually really good. Other than that, I feel like the genetic you system is, is uh, kind of good. Together, now and so they, they can you know. be proud of that. If my Sims were a soap opera, I would win a daytime Emmy because there's so much drama going on in my Sim world. I like um, that in Sims, like you can do whatever you want. I'd create a person, a sim, and I'd make their little home to the best that I could with the money that was allotted to me. And um, I'd have them get married, and it is tough to get married on the sims. It takes work. You have to feed the people. It, to keep them happy. it is. If she's talking about the sims one, which I assume she does, then getting married in the sims one is a nightmare getting friends in the sims one is a nightmare it's so hard like uh, it's so hard i don't know why but sometimes sims and like even sims you are already friends or in love with just sometimes decide that they hate you and you can't talk to them at all because every interaction will have a negative effect on your relationship and it's just a nightmare i was playing like a few months ago and oh boy it was hard 
recently made a family where a guy married a girl, then I had him marry another girl, and I have the I have the two wives fight with each other because they get jealous. Yeah, well, we were trying to do this thing where I I made my character and I lived down the street from her character. Like I love. Um, Having two women get into like a fist fight, it's so funny. And I would. <laughs> oh, this girl! I love Come her. Come and bring her character flowers and chocolate and all this stuff, and try to put the moves on her character. And then I'd marry another one. <laughs> I was definitely one of those. <laughs> These Sims players are chaotic. <laughs> Chaotic. Also, I love how the girl is speaking down from a window. I don't know why is that. The Sims actually got me more into interior design, and I was um, studying um, architectural stuff last semester at school. I think it's it's a nice point to make because I think a lot of people are like that. That while playing The Sims, you get so many different hobbies which relate to that. So, for example, this girl said that um, she was very into interior design because of The Sims. And I remember my cousin was like that as well. She wanted to be an interior designer because of The Sims. And I know a lot of you guys and a lot of people on Tumblr are really into architecture because of The Sims and, um, and stuff like that. And I remember because playing The Sims, I learned how to use Photoshop. I learned how to uh, write CSS codes and stuff like that because I had a uh, Sims fan page when I was younger. So I think it's interesting that a video game can spark so many other interests in real life. After the mystery, after the mystery. <laughs> I love this girl. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, and these were the, the offices of Maxis. Oh, it's amazing. It brings back so much memories and it really made me appreciate The Sims 2 even more because, as I said, looking at these from lots of years retrospect, it's still a great game and it's very true for the things they said to us while trying to sell this game. So I'm really, really proud of The Sims 2 theme. And I'm really happy that I can be here creating content for you guys about the, this game still in 2021 because the Sims 2 community is still super strong and we still love this game. And I think it's with the reason. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will leave every link in the description for the content of this uh, disc if you want to watch it on your own. If you like this video, leave a like, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I upload every Tuesday and Friday and I stream over my Twitch channel every Wednesday. So I hope to see you guys there and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!